Hello everybody. My name is Asad Mujib and I'm from the Department of Electrical Engineering. Today I will talk about the climate change because we are talking about the climate change week. So the main purpose of my speech is actually to the transition of renewable energies into the power systems to mitigate climate change. When you when you talk about climate change, you will see different type of some horrible pictures and you will see some of them. So Renewable energies is one of the important source which can mitigate climate change in the most efficient way we can tackle the carbon emissions. So if you see the global greenhouse gas emissions, it's already reached to 60% of 60 gigatons. So when we come to when we see the 60 gigatons, it's increasing day by day because of the industrial revolution. But renewable energy is calling us. We need to spend a lot of money, a lot of investment from the policies from $2 trillion to $5 trillion, which is depicted by IPC, which is the Climate, climate Change Governance Organizations, and also IEE. But when we talk about the greenhouse emission, the power sector, which I'm talking about renewable energies, it's contributing 25%. The next is, we have to set two targets according to the press agreements. One is called, 2030 agreements and the second one is the second target is 2050 goals but if you want to achieve the 2050 goals we all have to unite together including the political organization and every human well being but renewable energies is further divided into and to subparts that how can we achieve there. The first is renewable energies, which we can see from our pictures that it's on the right track. And second is the renewable energy efficiency. But electrification, hydrocarbon, hydrogen, and also the carbon captures, it's still actually not on track. We have to actually deploy 147 million electric vehicles by 2050, which is a huge target. So when we come to the first phase, which is 2030, 2030, we are we are by five by high far margin missing those 1.5 target. So we have to check first that how much we are integrating renewable energies by now to the grid. We have some good news from there that we have already deployed a lot of renewable energies and it has been increased 7%, 6% to 295 gigawatt by 2021. Even we were facing a lot of climate, we were facing a lot of climate change difficulties, including some of the pandemic level, but we are doing great and we are expecting that it will increase from 8 to 8% 8 in 2022. So this is some good news, but we will still face some energy prices, some freight prices in this regard. And you can see from here that solar energy and wind, which is which is one of the main fundamental, which is one of the main fundamental resource of energy, has done quite great. And solar energy is leading is leading the race with 135 gigawatt increase. The next is we will talk about the countries. So all the globe is doing some efforts, and in this aspect, we think that China is doing great. And 46% of the renewable energy capacity has been only and only added by, by Chinese region. And there is, has been a huge gap from Asian countries and European countries, and Europe is in the second race. Solar and wind is the main focus of renewable energies. And solar can be seen from here that 132 gigawatt, 32 gigawatt has already been deployed and integrated into our smart grids. But we also expect a lot of increase from our solar energies and from other aspect, which we see that China accounted only for 53 gigawatt, which is 40% of the total renewable energy integration. But solar PV, we, we still expect that in the next two or three years until 2030, that there will be a 60% increase in here. According to the country shares of exports in solar energies, just like we mentioned that it's the 40% is only shared by China with the uh, compared to the rest of the world falling by Japan and Germany. The next is wind. Wind is one of the second and the most important, part, one of the second and the most important sources of energy. But we have, we have not been so sharp in, the, in these two, three years in wind. It was really doing great in 2019 and 2020 until we were hit by pandemic. And 93 gigawatt of capacity is still added to the, in 2021 it was added compared to 2020. And we are expecting more and 47 gigawatt was added by China in 2020 to 2022. This is about onshore. Offshore speed is 
quite slow at its movement, but there are some countries, including Netherlands, Denmark, Germany, UK, including China, and we are expecting that more than 21 gigawatt will be deployed in the next 10 years. When we come to the shares, Germany has done a great job in the last two years because China in 2020 and 2019 was highly affected by pandemic. So the, 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 the wind growth was a little bit slow, which, which fell down to 13.8%. And Denmark and Germany is, has done quite great, great job in this aspect. But we also expect that because offshore wind is actually a little slow in this regard, and we expect that it, the, the rate will become increasing higher and higher. So renewable energies is not only about the clean energy, it's also very cheap. It is, it is one of the important aspects. But if we compare this statistics with the last 10 years, you, we can see that from last 2020 to 2021, renewable energies prices has been fallen down, especially when you come to the photovoltaic, including the concentrated solar from, to 85%, and onshore wind become goes down to 56% the price and offshore goes to the 48%. This can be seen from this data. In renewable energies, when it comes to the clean energies, the climate mitigation, it's one of the sources that can give a lot of employment and job to the, to the whole world. It, the data has been shown from IRENA that worldwide employment has been increased by in renewable energies to 12.7 million. To 12.7 12 million were actually related to different renewable energy resources. And it was actually 12 million, so an increase of 0.7 million is actually quite a great figure. But when we come to the job market, solar has done again the great job, and the next is wind and hydro energies. Actually, 2.7 million jobs were actually added only in China. And then we see in the, in the wind, it's again 0.7 million. But when it comes to the hydropower, China is still leading the race of 37% increase in the job market. And then Brazil is doing great in biofuels. So we have seen a lot of renewable energy resources, many resources we have, we have seen. We can see a lot of panels, wind power everywhere. So why we are still struggling with 1.5 degrees Celsius carbon target, which was 2030 and 2050, we are still lagging this way. So what's the problem? What we are going to do next for that? The next is we are going to come with the, some policies. Policies is very important, not only for the government, the policies should involve every individual, every person, including me and also everyone. So it's a job which we will go for it together. And it's not on an only one country job, it's the whole world job. So we will deploy the policies. We have to integrate the policies, not only integrate, the, deploy the policies. Then we have to work for the next steps, which is the energy, which is enabling of the policies. Then we can come to the total transition of energy policies and the global climate change, which will involve that. One of the important thing about the carbon emission is we have to decrease the carbon pricing level. As the policies can be seen in the current and 1.5 degree Celsius scale, actually the PBB here is actually the policy basket B. We have to come with the policy basket B in which we have the carbon pricing stability. It should not, it cannot be so much higher, it cannot be so much low, because if it's too much low, it's, it's affecting a lot of countries' economy. And then we have to come with international climate collaboration. International collaboration is very important to tackle those climate change policies. And we have some distributed policies which comes from region to region, from country to country. So it's the climate change, the 1.5 degree Celsius scale, the two type of target 2030 and 2050 is calling us to unite together, to come together and tackle those climate change. So here the planet is actually asking us, it's actually begging us to save me. So save me. Thank you.